Surat al-Mulk, everyone. Surat al-Mulk, which is Surah 67. Surah 67. We can never have enough of the Quran, right? Surat al-Mulk is a surah that, mashallah, uh, if a Muslim reads every night, he will not be punished in the grave. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Allah will not punish in the grave. And you know that once you are not punished in the grave, it means there is no punishment after that. Insha'Allah. Meaning Allah has forgiven you, khalas. That's why I told you, sisters, the hereafter, the hereafter, all depends on the first night we spend in the grave. If that night passes peacefully, Alhamdulillah Rabbil If that night, if that first night, na'udhu billah, a person gets into trouble, khalas. Khalas, you know, because the muqaddima was wrong. The muqaddima, the beginning was wrong. What do you think the end will be? You start right, you end up right. So the muqaddima of the hereafter was questioning, terrible questioning. So, Ya Allah, how, what are the things that if I do, inshallah it will help me in that first night. Surat al-Mulk. Reading it every night before you sleep. Sheikh, if I miss one day or two or three, no problem. As long as you read and you remember, alhamdulillah. It's two pages and a half. That's all. 30 ayahs. Three zero. You read every night before you sleep, either from your cell phone or from your mushaf. And then turn on your right hand and snore. <laughs> Let's say something happened, your child gets up and he wants food or minum, maybe dalia, 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 Ah, Adliya, susu, and you get up another half an hour. Should I read again? No. As long as it's one of the last things you do before you sleep. But try, try, sisters, because you end your day with Quran and what surah? Rasulullah sallam said, "Man qara'a surat al-mulk kull layla." He who recites Surah Al-Mulk every night. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala najjahu Allah min adab al-qabr aw kama qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah will save him from adab al-qabr. Promise. So please read it, sisters and brothers, as much as you can, inshallah. Sheikh, I'm so weak in Arabic. Too bad. Go read the English, no problem at least. But I'm too bad. Let's say I'm really, really... One eye or two, I struggle. Too bad. But at least read it in, inshallah, different language. Yalla ha, Surah Al-Mulk, everyone. Al-Mulk, you all know what does it mean. Closest word to it is what? In, 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 uh, in Arabic. Malaika. Malik. Oh, Malik. And Malaika, good. Malik, Malaika. Malaika, I'll call Malaika because they're so close to the Malik. When you're so close to the king, you are called what? Special. Or what call those people who are close to the king? Protocol officers. You don't know. Good. <laughs> Good. Yeah, the people who are always, always around. The Malaika, because they are too close to Allah, so they are always around his arsh. So... What we call, they are malaika from mulk. Also, they do exactly as Allah says. They never disobey him. They obey the malik. For us, we disobey him many times. May Allah forgive us. Many times. Do you know how dangerous, sisters, just to disobey him once and a small thing? Small thing. How about major sin? So, but he forgives. He's so kind and merciful. And he is actually happy, happy that you repent to him. He's very happy when you, when you say ma'afiya Allah. He knows you're weak. He knows you mess up. But you showed humility. And you came back to him. So he forgives. But you drag your feet until death comes, he will show you. 
because you are being arrogant now. <coughs> All right. Al-Mulk means the kingdom or the dominion. Al-Malik is Allah. Allah is Malik and Malik. Allah is Malik and Malik. What's the difference? Allah is, okay. Let me write first the title of this surah. So that like this, everybody understands. It is Al, what's wrong? The black one is here. Ah. Al-Mulk. Al-Mulk. Al-Mulk is coming, sisters and brother, from the, the word Malaka. So your Malaka is Arabic name. Hmm. Because the Portuguese also call it Malaga. There is a city in Spain called Malaga. Because it's the Arabs who named it. Okay. Malaka, Yamliku. He owns. So Al-Mulk means dominion. Do minion. My dominion, my kingdom, or kingdom. Okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his malik and ah, thank you. And malik. Short. The difference is this added. Malik literally means king. Malik means owner. Because you may be the king, but you own nothing. You just rule. For Allah, no, no. He doesn't just rule. He owns. In some countries, the queen of England or the, the king of Malaysia doesn't rule. He's not ruler. The ruler is the prime minister. You know what I mean? He's sitting there in case. Allah is not just sitting there. Allah is the king and he is the owner. In other countries, someone just owns. He owns, but he doesn't rule. In some other countries, no. He rules and owns. Clear? Yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, the mulk belongs to me. All what you see and don't see sisters, all belong to him, including you. Including the mind that you don't see. If they remove your heart and show it to you, and you have a chance to see it, they say, this belongs to Allah, doesn't belong to you. Then they put it back. Everything in you, whether you see it or not, the mind you don't see, because it's something spiritual. You see the brain, but the mind you don't see. The soul. All that belongs to the king. All the heavens and earth. And... Khalas, so show respect. Allahu Akbar, sisters, Wallahi al we need to learn to just through, we don't have to see Allah to appreciate Him. Just look at what He did. A baby, you look at the baby, subhanAllah. Yes, that baby, inshallah, will grow up and become taller than you and me. Hmm. And as you feed Him, start feeding you. Yes. So, you see a mountain. You take a, a flight and you start seeing things under you. Allahu Akbar. You see the moon, the stars. You study astronomy. Khalas. Malik, Malik. He owns. Second, he is king. So that's why we read Al Fatiha. Malik Yawmiddin and Malik Yawmiddin. Both correct. If you read Al Fatiha, Malik Yawmiddin. If you come to North Africa, we read Malik, Malik Yawmiddin. You think, huh? In other parts of the world, Maliki Yawmiddin. Because that's how the Quran was revealed. Okay? So Allah is talking about His kingdom. And He uses the word Tabaraka. Tabaraka is a very unique word, sisters. It's from the Baraka. You want the Baraka? Be Allah's slave. How can you, how, how does Allah give you Baraka, sisters, when you don't worship the one who owns the Baraka? You upset him morning, noon, afternoon, and night. You want barakah? Forget it. You have to please him. You have to be his slave. Pray subuh on time. Pray all the salawat on time. Attend classes like this. Deal with the Quran. Quran is Mubarak. Mubarak, Tabarak, Barakah. All from this blessing. 
So let's see what Allah says about himself. He is talking about himself. He starts with the, the, the word blessed. Ah, you need to know something about Allah. Allah is full of blessings. You want blessings? Please Allah. So he will give you blessings. These blessings, sisters, are not necessarily material. Please stop looking at blessings. Yeah. He's blessed. What happened? Look at his uh, house. He must be blessed. Karun had a big house. Was he blessed? He was blasted. Not blessed. Be careful, eh? bless and blast sounds the same. Takbir. Serious. Ah, but yes, it's a blessing from Allah, definitely, materially. But does that mean he is blessed? No. You know who is blessed? Sisters, whoever finds time for the Quran. When you see Allah giving you time and drawing your heart towards the Quran, then you are really blessed. Doing good. You think of helping the needy and the poor. You, you, you feel like visiting someone sick. You, you bring joy to people's hearts. And you are healthy. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps you out of troubles. You are blessed, alhamdulillah. Sheikh, if someone gets sick, does that mean he's not blessed? No. Because it could be worse. Let's say Sheikh Zubair has a knee problem. That is really painful. But doesn't mean it could be both knees. It could be something worse. Yes. You got it? Yes. So please, my sisters, it could be that your children, alhamdulillah, are okay. They study, they are healthy. No one is really very, very sick or something like that. It could be that your children don't bring you trouble. They are not bad. They don't go with villains and come and bring you big problems, dishonor, and this and that. Three things, if you have them, consider yourself queen from now on. Three things. Number one, shelter. If you have a roof on top of your head. And I didn't say anywhere. Huh? I didn't say in Kota Damansara or Damansara Height. Roof. If you have a roof, and alhamdulillah, you sleep under a roof. And you're protected during the rain and during the sun, the heat. Second, if you have the food of one day, makan only for one day, you have nasi lama in the morning and little water. That will make you survive for one day. Little nasi lama, although may Allah forgive them, they are even stealing from the egg. <laughs> it used to be half egg, then quarter, then now half of quarter. Like bear. Oh, Time will come, you ask them, where is the... They say, make niya, make niya that there is egg there. Okay. The third thing, sisters, is health. If you get up in the morning and go to the toilet by yourself, by yourself, no one takes you to the toilet. Consider yourself queen. Wallahi al-Adim. Because that's dunya. Dunya is what is one day. This is no guarantee tomorrow we'll be here. Today, okay, alhamdulillah, Allah, Allah said, okay, get up. Tomorrow we may go to bed, khalas. There is no guarantee even we live until, until afternoon. Point I'm making, this do, do, don't consider yourself rich only when you have so much. You are already rich. Okay. So these are the three things makes you queen already. Alhamdulillah. Shelter, sisters. Yes. Tell your children. Tell your husbands. Dear husband, if we have shelter, even rent. Alhamdulillah. We may die while there are stocks, stockpiles of money in the bank that we, we own and gold. We die. Alhamdulillah, we have this, yalla, alhamdulillah. Second, we have food for one day, especially breakfast, alhamdulillah. Yes. What else? Health. You get up, you go to the toilet by yourself. Because there are many people taken to the toilet. There are many people, they change their diapers. You know what I mean? This is sister's big ni'mah. But the biggest ni'mah Allah gave you so far and me is Islam. You're Muslim, alhamdulillah, what do you want? So that's your ticket. Uh, sorry, that's your passport. Ticket, yalla, so, uh, good works here and there. Good deeds. 
Definitely you make it inshallah. So Allah is saying, blessed is he in whose hand is the dominion. <laughs> Sisters, all this universe that we know, this is just the sky, eh? the first sky. The universe is bigger than this, seven times. It's in his hand. So how big is Allah? Think, think. <laughs> That's why we say Allahu Akbar. Akbar means Mahabasar, more than anything that comes in your mind, Allah is bigger than that. Think, think. No, don't think about Allah. Think about the universe, how big the universe. Allah is bigger than that. So it is in his hand. Ya Allah. Tabarak alladhi bi yadihi al-mulk. Wa huwa ala kuli shayin qadir. One more thing. He is full of power. He can do anything, anything he wants. Can you do anything you want? No. no. There are many things you want in life, but you cannot do them. You cannot. Because the will of Allah is unlimited. There is no restriction for the will of God. And all he says, sisters, be. Yes. He doesn't even do it. He just say be. As he wills. Supreme power. So this is your God. This is who you are worshipping. You should be so proud. Ya Allah, thank you. Thank you that you guided me to know you. And you are that powerful. Because others are worshipping statue that they made with their own hand. If you push the statue, it will break. Just push it. If a dog comes, it will urinate on that statue. So thank Allah, Allah says, come to me. But here, why he said tabarak? Wallahi al -adim, all the barakah is with Allah. Please Him. Please Him. How to please Allah? Directly or indirectly? Directly by worshipping Him like prayers. Indirectly like sadaqat. Like, uh, uh, so fasting, sisters. Look, salat, fasting, and hajj. That's direct to Allah and zakat. Sadaqat, visiting someone sick, helping someone being with someone, cracking jokes, listening to someone who has problem, listening. Sometimes you just listen. SubhanAllah, you do nothing. But you listen now, huh? you don't like pretend to listen. Then that's it. That person feels good later on because he relieved himself from those feelings. And Rasulullah Sash was very good at this. He used to listen to people. When people come and tell him their problems, he gives them an ear. قُلْ هُوَ أُذُنُ خَيْرٍ لَكُمْ قُلْ أُذُنُ خَيْرٍ لَكُمْ Say, he is an ear of goodness to you. He does, he's not listening to your backbiting and slander. He's, he's listening to your questions of fatwa. He's listening to your worries. A man and a woman fight. Uh, he listens to both of them to solve the problem. This is what he was listening to. Sallallahu alayhi.